This is the Keychron Q1 Pro knob version. It's a 75% mechanical keyboard. 75% means that it has uh, basically all of the keys that you would need on a basic keyboard. It is missing a little cluster over here as well as uh, the arrow cluster has moved over here a little bit and then the numpad is missing. There are several different types of keyboard layouts, but um, this is one of the many that Keychron has put out over the years. They've been around since 2017. I got this one specifically at Micro Center. I got it for $219 there uh, on the Keychron website. It's $199 and it, it comes with a $30 shipping charge usually. Uh, but they have several other accessories that you can get on the website that are perfectly matched to this keyboard, which are pretty sweet. For example, a wrist rest, carrying case, uh, keycaps, switches, stabilizers, different plates for your keyboard. Uh, there's several different ways to modify your keyboard. You can get artisan keycaps, you can get different knobs. This one comes with a black knob, but you can get a white one or a green one or a gold one. Here there's different colors. This is the 10th Keychron keyboard I've owned. Some of those 10 I've sold or given away. Some I've kept, but this is probably going to be the main keyboard on my desk for the most part. It replaces the Q11 that I had for almost a month, but it just didn't end up working perfectly for me. So I changed it out for this. This is the black one. It comes with these gray keycaps on originally and they're gray and black. They're almost identical to the keycaps that I have here. The keycap profile is KSA, which I believe stands for Keychron Sculpted Angle, which is just, if I'll, as I turn this to the side, you can see there's just a little bit of an angle to it right there. Uh, actually, kind of a drastic angle compared to some other keycaps that are out there. Do I have another? Here's kind of a standard escape key right here. And this is the one that's on here. It's kind of a big difference. Uh, there's a huge difference there. These sculpted angle keys are angled towards you a little bit more. They kind of cradle your fingers in the way that they are concave. And um, they have a great sound, sound with them. I actually put tape on the back of this, so that changed that sound a little bit, but they've got some great sound to them. I like these keycaps and I like this keyboard. I've owned nine other Keychron keyboards over the last several months in an effort to find the one that's best for me. I've had the K1, the K2, the K3, the K4, the K7, the K8, the K11, the S1, the Q11, uh, the Q0, which is my numpad right here. I still have this. And um, now there's the Q1 Pro, which sits before you here. So this keyboard comes in three different colors from Keychron. You could get black, there is a silver gray, and there's also a white. You could get an all black edition. You can get the keycaps that I got uh, from Micro Center. There's also white keycaps. I also bought both black and white of the KSA profile keycaps. So it's fun to just play with keycaps. Um, and that's the, the first thing I'll say about this keyboard. Uh, I, I love that it's hot swappable, which means I can very easily take off any one of these keycaps with this keycap puller. And then these are switches. Switches are what sends the signal from the keycap to the board, the PCB, which then sends the signal to your computer. So you can get different switches. You can switch your switches out. I've got a couple different here on the wall. I've got some in boxes. I've got them all over the place. The switches here can provide different levels of feedback. There are two main types of switches 
uh, tactile and linear. These yellow ones are kind of tactile. And they provide a little bit of feedback as you push on it, just in that it requires a little bit of effort. There are red switches that Keychron makes that don't really have much of, and don't really require much effort at all. Uh, there are also the brown ones, which I also have brown switches on this keyboard. The brown switches are also tactile switches like the uh, Keychron banana switches that I have here. I like having a hot swappable board because I can swap these keycaps around. I can swap out the key the switches. I can lube the switches, which is a really, really interesting undertaking, but it involves taking these switches apart. These little plastic pegs right there, right? Those come off on either side of the switch. And then the white part separates from the clear part of the housing. And I guess there's three parts, right? You can also see this yellow peg looking doodad. Um, and then inside there's a spring and push on this yellow peg looking doodad. It then sends the signal down to these little metal pins, which is connected to the PCB. And then that sends the signal to your computer. I've got um, some Sharpie marker on the bottom of this switch because I lubed it. Um, you can lube your switches, which again, we take them apart and then you apply a machine lubricant to the parts where plastic touches plastic or plastic touches metal or wherever there's any kind of friction. And then that just provides a much smoother feel and less scratchy sound. It's so hard to even pick up. And you have to be like listening to it for months, I think, to really feel a difference. I did lube these switches, which it was really fun. Kristen bought me a lubing station for my birthday, which allowed me to easily take these apart and then apply the lube where it needs to go and then put them back together. And when I first got started with these keyboards, I didn't think that that was going to be something I was going to do. I thought that I was just going to have fun with the keycaps and the different keyboards that are out there. I like the low profile, as you can see from my collection, but I also like these standard heavy ones. So I didn't know that I was gonna lube these when I first got started. I'm, I had fun though, I'm glad I did. Back to this Keychron Q1 Pro. It will work plugged in via USB-C or it will also work with a Bluetooth connection. You can have three different Bluetooth connections. One, two, and three is how you operate them. You hold function and then hold one or two or three to connect to Bluetooth. This is an all aluminum keyboard. I can take it apart by taking these eight screws out and then it basically separates along this line that you can see right here. And then there's this bottom and this top case. Here I'm gonna show you this kind of exploded view of the keyboard. There's the bottom case that has the screws in it and then there's case foam at the very bottom that kind of helps to deaden the sound. I added some other cotton batting on top of that. And then there is also the PCB, which is where your switches plug into. And then there's a piece of foam above that there's the plate and that also really kind of holds the switches really in place firmly uh, there are these pour on foam gaskets that go around the plate that help deaden the sound there's also some gaskets that you can see here along the bottom case these little pieces are what forms something that's called a force break mod you just basically put some tape along the parts where two pieces of case touch each other where there's metal on metal contact and that helps to soften the sound a little bit more. So after the top plate there is the top case it goes over it and then again those switches that are plugged into the PCB and then keycaps go on top of that. Uh, there is a knob here 
by default, it controls the volume, uh, just turning it up and down or pushing it to mute it. Uh, you can program all the keys on this keyboard, which is something that I think is really cool. It does, you don't have to be stuck with just the way that the keys come from the factory. If I wanted this to be the end key instead of the home key, I could change that and I could just pop this key cap off and put the end key here instead. Or I could just leave it, the home key, it's still gonna work that way. Uh, that's a question I got from somebody. They asked me if I could just switch the keycap and then that would switch the function of the key. Uh, you actually have to use software to change the function of the key. Uh, here, I'll show you just a really quick demonstration. Um, this keyboard uses VIA, which is um, a software program that I'm pretty comfortable with. It's really easy to use, but you basically just, boom, um, I'm gonna change the functionality of this home button. And um, instead of home, it's now gonna be my eject button. You can then just swap that out. You can swap it out for any function that you want. You can also create what's called a macro. So you can set it up so this home button, I could change this so that the home button actually now does a screenshot. That's something that's really cool about this keyboard and other keyboards that are out there these days. You're not just stuck with what you get out of the factory, you can change it. I told you this knob controls the volume, you can push it in to mute it or you can turn it to control the volume, but you can also uh, program it so that it can zoom in and out of a piece of art that you're working on or it can scrub through a timeline of a song or a video. It, you can have it do play pause. You can do a lot of different things. You can program your keyboard to do whatever you want it to do. I mentioned the keycaps here. Um, these are double shot. Double shot means that there's an inner keycap, the white one on the black keycap, or there is a black inner piece on this white keycap. So that is what actually formed the legend. The information on the keycap and then the outside part is what is the actual keycap right so there are two pieces double shot and bbt is the type of plastic that's used to make the keycap you could make keycaps out of abs plastic which uh, isn't as durable as pbt it actually shines a little bit more. You might see keyboards that do have shining on keys that are used a lot. You might have a keyboard that has shining on keys that you use a lot. And that's because typically that keyboard is made from ABS plastic. I've got some wooden keycaps. Uh, you could make uh, keycaps out of all different types of metals. I've seen porcelain keycaps. I've seen 3D printed keycaps. I guess that's just plastic too usually, but you could use a lot of different materials to make keycaps. Keyboard works with Mac and Windows, which I appreciate, but it's nice that you can just switch with the switch on the back to go between Mac and Windows. That's convenient for somebody who does maybe use Mac at home and Windows at work or vice versa. That's nice. This keyboard is made using a double gasket design, which means there's these silicone gaskets in between the two pieces of the case, the bottom case and the top case. Uh, but then there's also some poron gaskets that are used to hold the plate in place, which provides some cushiony typing feel as you're typing or pushing on the keyboard here. I do have some extra padding underneath here, so it doesn't give as much as it normally would, but it, it is nice. This keyboard has RGB, which is pretty cool. I didn't expect to like or even appreciate RGB as much as I do now when I first got started with mechanical keyboards. But it is, it, it is kind of a cool feature. You can look at different types of lights and you can change how strong they are as far as brightness. Um, you can change how saturated the color is. If there's an animation that's involved with the the backlight that you have going on, you can change the speed of the animation. So there's a lot of different options here with the backlight. You can turn it off. It could be all one color, it could be just white, or it could have you know, rainbow effects. That's fun. It's not for everybody, and you don't have to use it, but it's nice that it's there. It's obviously one of their flagship keyboards. It's kind of a standard layout. 
and you really can't lose when it comes to this keyboard. If you're thinking about purchasing this keyboard for yourself, don't hesitate. Go out there and get it. It's, it's really great. It's, uh, if you have any questions about this board, if you want to see me make any modifications, if you want to see me try some of these different switches I have here on the wall, I've got a closet, not a closet full, but I've got a couple boxes of keycaps we can try out different profiles and different materials. Uh, so let me know if you want me to try out some different material keycaps or some different switches or some different modifications. We can remove the tape mod, we can take out the padding, we can take out the foam. Um, I was thinking about trying a different plate, but I don't have any different plates, but we'll see. Maybe one day I'll get a plate. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I'll see you next time when I hopefully bring you a video about the Acro ACR Top 40. If not, the 8-bit dough retro mechanical keyboard. This is fashioned after the Nintendo NES game system that we all, well, some of us know and love from the 80s. I picked this keyboard up, got some feelings about it, got some facts and some opinions I'd like to share about that keyboard eventually. So that might be my next review if I don't finish the one about the top 40 here first. Uh, we'll see what comes out next. But thank you for hanging out with me again. Appreciate your time and your participation. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Late.